Hello everyone, Mike1217 here, welcoming you back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. I want to mention that if you were to enter the, this castle in the night time, uh, you wouldn't be able to get through it because there'd be guards right here, um, and you wouldn't get past it. So you want to make sure you enter here in the daytime, uh, which shouldn't be a problem because you need it to be day to have that chicken hatch to wake up Talon. Anyway, this is a stealth segment. This is really the only stealth segment you do in this game. Um, stealth is something that Zelda games don't generally do a very good job of, though I think they have gotten a little bit better about it in recent games. L like, Skyward Sword, I think it did a good, pretty good job of it with that, um, oh, whatchamacallit, that Death Mountain, not Death Mountain, you know, you, like, you know what I'm talking about, it's like, near, if you played the game anyway, it's like near the end of the game. Where it's the song of the hero part, where you have to, where you lose all your items and you sneak around the Elden volcano to get all your items back. That was very good. This is pretty mediocre. Um, and they give you like this fixed camera angle too. It's just annoying waiting for these guys to move. And it, it seems like a lot of times Zelda games, for whatever reason, they like to put stealth early in the game too. Like these miniature stealth segments, like. In Majora's Mask, you had the Deku Palace pretty early in the game. In Wind Waker, you have the Forsaken Fortress, which is something that I criticized being at the beginning of that game. And uh, it, it harkens back to what I was talking about earlier in the last episode, how 3D Zelda games, like other than this one, have a habit of getting off to kind of slow starts. And that was what was really kind of, in my opinion, a bad way to start off a Wind Waker, was with the stealth segment. Like, they take away your sword, and then you sneak around the Forsaken Fortress in the stupid self segment. By the way, I think I'm in trouble here. I might be okay. I'm kind of worried right now. This part kind of freaks me out, this last part, because they move in a weird pattern. But we're done. That is the end of the stealth segment, and we can enter on in here. And we get the classic Zelda's lullaby song going on. Of course, Zelda's right on ahead, but... Of course, it wouldn't be a Zelda LP without this. I guess I have to get this out of the way, because people are going to bug me if I don't do it. Are you happy now? Yeah, there they are. There they are. It's kind of hard to see some of them. Actually, there's a little extra thing you can do with this. If you shoot the window, you get money, so that's good. There's at least something of substance there, but yeah, that's... One of the most well-known Easter egg in Zelda history is the uh, Mario characters back there. Another one that that um, fewer people know about is if you shoot this window, this is kind of funny, a guard will pop out, he'll be like, don't cause any trouble, and then he'll shoot a bomb out. This is the first time you actually see bombs in this game. And there are tricks you can do with bombs, like glitches. Like you can get, I think you can get infinite sword glitch off of those. I'm, again, I'm not going to be exporting glitches. Unless I'm just doing it for fun, I guess, but... But, like, I don't even know how to do infinite sword glitch. Like, I know how to do it, but I don't, like, practice it. Anyway, stop talking about that. Whatever, let's go up and talk to Zelda before we get completely sidetracked and get this famous cutscene out of the way. I'm gonna talk through a little bit of this because this is kind of long and drawn out. This cutscene, um... This cutscene I spent a lot of time at I just remember having so much fun with this as a kid because like there'd be a lot of yes or no questions that she'd ask you, and it was always so much fun at the time to see like what she would say. And um, I don't know, it, like we were easily entertained as kids with this cutscene for some stupid reason. We, we'd be stuck here forever, like saying no, like because eventually she'd, she'd ask you, like, oh wow, that's a really big close up by the way. Like, like this one right here, we, we can say no. Oh, I don't have the spiritual stone, we never got it. But of course she won't actually let you say no. Like, I guess you could technically walk away. But no, you have to say yes. I don't know why it was so, like, just... It was so fascinating to see, like, a different answer for each, uh... For, you know, for each option. I don't know why. Now, something I want to check out, I'm very curious about, that I've never checked out, I don't think, is what's underneath the steps that we're standing on. You can see there's like a little archway underneath the steps there. I was meaning to check that out before I talked to her, but I didn't. Eh? 
I think at this point I'm gonna let the cutscene kind of take over. There's really not much else I had to say about it. I don't know whether or not she... If this is a point where she tells that story that the Great Deku Tree just told. That cutscene that you saw in the Deku Tree. Oh, and by the way, this part where you tell her her name. For one thing, this is... Apparently the only time Link actually speaks, other than yes or no, because it's in green right there. That, imp that implies that Link actually said it, which is kind of interesting. But another thing with <laughs> with the whole name, and, you know, the whole fact that you can give Link, you know, any name you want. This, of course, sparked our immature child selves to create all sorts of... Uh, inappropriate names, you know, I'm sure everyone did that when they played this one, and I did it too, I'm guilty of that. Can you please keep a secret from everyone? I, I wonder if that really is supposed to be a reference to, uh, it's a secret to, to everybody, I don't know, but yeah, she is going to do that cutscene. Uh, they do this cutscene quite a bit in this game, it's kind of repetitive, but I'll let it play again. Thank you. 
And this is where she actually asks you, um, are you going to save Hyrule? This is basically what this question is asking you. Okay. <laughs> That's the response. Are you going to save Hyrule? Okay. I don't know, I just found that really funny. Okay, so this right here, he, er, she says, like, like, she says, as we're gonna take this letter, and, and watch her animation. It looks like that she's writing the letter right then. So, that's gotta be, like, the quickest and most off-the-cuff letter ever written in the history of anything. Like, she pulls out a piece of paper right there and writes the letter right in front of you. Like, she didn't have that pre-prepared. It doesn't seem like. I mean, you, you would assume that's probably what happened if she had the letter pre-prepared. But the animation shows her. It looks like she's writing the letter, like, with the way her hand moves and everything. Okay, I want to check out this, which I was talking about earlier. Is there anything underneath here? No, what a big disappointment. Okay, so... Still have a little bit more left to do. Sorry that I was kind of in and out with my talking there. Um, usually I don't talk over cutscenes, as you have probably noticed by now. But, eh, I wanted to throw a few thoughts here and there in that cutscene, so sorry if it was a bit awkward. We have a little bit more left to go here. We were meeting Impa, and I am scratching my foot like a madman. If you, <laughs> I still have those bug bites on my feet, and I know that's exactly what you want to be hearing about at this pivotal point in the game. Okay, so here we're going to actually learn our first song. I remember, like, I, I distinctly remember the first time this was introduced to us. And uh, when we actually you know, get to the point where she's going to teach us a song, I remember being so freaked out at this. Because it says, memorize this song. And that word memorize just freaked me out. Because it's like, oh god, I'm going to have to memorize this? Are you serious? And it just sound, it, that, that sounded so intimidating to have to memorize a song. It turns out that you can just uh, check your pause menu if you ever forget a song. So it's no big deal. But I remember actually writing this down. I wrote this down on a piece of paper. I, I ran up, got a piece of paper, and wrote it down. <laughs> I, I, that, that's, that's another little childhood story about this game, playing through it for the first time. So we've learned Zelda's Lullaby, and... Um, that's just about it. Uh, it's kind of funny how they call it Zelda's Lullaby, because it doesn't actually put anyone to sleep, but whatever. It is what it is.